Hello everyone. So I hope you are fine. So today we are going to discuss about the week two of IT security defense against digital dark arts, which is a last course of the specialization that is offered by Google. Okay, so this week we will discuss about cryptology the whole week and if we went through the first topic of this week is symmetric encryption. So symmetric encryptions they already provided some lecture video which are really helpful so I think you must go through this but I'm showing you the feedback of my quizzes so that you can make up your marks 100% or so on but don't forget to go through the lectures that will be helpful for you okay so the first question what are the components that make up a crypto system okay so the system that we used for our cryptology this is called crypto system in a word in crypto system or cryptology we used to key generation algorithm and then we have encryption and decryption algorithm so these are the basic things that we need to know and in question number two what is this steganography this is one of the ancient term and very crucial term as well so steganography is nothing but the practice of hiding or concealing messages that's the answer and what makes encryption algorithm symmetric because the same key is used for encryption and decryption that's the symmetric in asymmetric same key is not used there's the difference between them okay so what's the difference between a stream cipher and a block cipher okay so a stream cipher encrypt data as a continuous stream and while block ciphers operate chunk of data at the same time or at a time okay so that's oh sorry i already forgot here's the last one the last one is true false the smaller encryption key is the more secure encrypted data yes that's false there's nothing so called that a smaller encryption key will give you more security rather than the encryption key the complex your encryption key the larger your encryption will be much harder for the hackers to crack the nut oh okay so then we need to go to our second topic which is basically public key or asymmetric encryption okay so you must as well go through the videos but I'm going to show you the feedbacks the first question of asymmetric encryption is which of the following do asymmetric crypto systems provide so there have three qualities in a word we call them NAC or CAN, CAN, whatever you say. By CAN, the first one is confidentiality, second one is authenticity, and the third one is non repudiation, which means uniqueness, exactly. Uh, what advantages do asymmetric algorithms have over symmetric ones? They allow secure communication over insecure channels. That's it. What common application? What common application for asymmetric algorithms? Secure P exchange S A E whatever okay so we are going to our next topic which is known as hashing which is most important in cryptology you must go through the lecture videos uh, so first question is how is hashing different from encryption because hashing operation is one directional whether the encryption and decryption there's a two way or two direction in crypto system what is hash collision? When two different files generate the same hash digest, then there's a collision happening between them. Okay, so the third one, how is the message integrity check or MIC is different from message authentication code or MAC? Uh, MAC incorporates a secret key, wire, and MIC only hashes the message. That's it. Okay, the fourth one, how can you defend against brute force password attack? The first one is you need to incorporate source into password hashing and then enforce the use of a strong password that you already know the run passwords through the hashing function multiple times so that you can check out your strength of your password that's it okay so i want to tell you that this salt is not the salt that we use to keep in our table that's the salt of password that we add in front of the password or in the end of the password okay so then the applications of cryptography then we are going to the practice quiz direct okay so there's the different applications of cryptography you must go through them okay the first question is what information does a digital certificate contain CA okay certificate authentication you must go through this okay so the first one is public key data and 
identifying information about the certificate owner that what ca does certificate authenticator does and digital signature these all the things will be contained in your digital certificate which all will be authorized by certificate authority okay so what encryption does ssl or dsl use they use both symmetric and asymmetric encryption what are the, some functions of TPM or Trusted Platform Module, which is kind of hardware actually, that used for encryption, I mean encryptology. The first one is remote attestation and the last one is data binding or sealing. They don't uh, do anything like malware detection or secure user authentication, that's not their deal. Okay, so basically we are at the verge of our assignment, which is the main checkpoint of this course. Okay, so you see I have got 92.85 percent due to my one mistake i will help you to get the full marks in that question also okay so the first question is plain text is original message while cipher text is encrypted message you know that very well the specific function converting plain text into cipher text is called encryption algorithm you must know that okay so that's the question that i have mistake study how often letters and pairs of letter occur in a language is it referred to Frequency analyzing analysis, not as espionage or code breaking or cryptography. True or false, the same plain text encrypted using the same algorithm and same encryption key would result in different cipher text output. Sorry, that's not the truth. They all will be the same using the same key. The practice of hiding message is known as steganography. ROT13 and Caesar cipher are the example of substitution ciphers. Uh, DES, RCR, and AES are example of symmetric encryption algorithm. What are the two components of a symmetric encryption system necessary for encryption and decryption operations? They are public key and private key. They both are complementary. To create a public key, you must need to use private key as I told you a second ago. Using a symmetric crypto system provides which of the following benefits? Non-repudiation, authentication, and confidentiality. In a word, we say it CAN. Can. The two different files result in the same hash is hash collision. When authenticating a user's password, the password supplied by the user is authenticated by comparing the hash of password with one stored on the system. That what does when we are trying, we try to log into our email or any type of social media ID. If a rainbow table is used instead of a brute force hashing, brute forcing hashes, what is the resource trade off or what it will cost? The rainbow table uses less computational resources, whether it uses more storage in your hard disk or more storage. In PKI system, what entity is responsible for issuing, storing, and signing certificates? Certificate authority. I think you don't forget that I already discussed about it in the previous quizzes. So we are going to our graded external assignments, which is the what can I say the main assignment that I have got so much fun doing this. I hope you guys will also enjoy it. So hop in when you open the tool, it will direct take you to the Quick Labs. Quick Labs is a virtual lab which is assigned by Google for cursor course. So when you press the start lab you will find an IP address and username and don't forget to download the Puthi configuration software their software they already give you the link here so after downloading it as I have already downloaded it so I already have it where is my Puthi okay so after downloading the Puthi you need to download the PPK file also don't forget to download it okay okay so the thing will depend on your network speed Okay, so my PPK file is downloaded. Now you need to copy your username. Just paste it here. Paste and put at the rate. And then again copy your IP address. And then put your IP address also in that. And then went to SSH. Click expand it and then you will find author. Author and author. So then browse the PPK file that you already download. Quick Labs PPK. Open. And now open it again. So you need to click the yes. In the dialog box so you are already done so now put the dialog box here and now you went to the assignment directly so you can see there are some assignments we are already finding generating keys yes this is our first task we need to generate a private key so you just need to press here and the command is copied and put your right button 
here and just press enter done okay then again put your right button and here click the right button enter yes again you get the second command also and now click on check your progress yes done okay so then our next task copy here right click enter done again copy the command right click done okay so that done so basically cat public key cat is the command for your output function so check your progress okay so i already checked my progress uh you can see the score is now 20 by 40 20 out of 40 so we need to go to our third part of our assignment which is encrypting and decrypting so as well as you need to press on the copy button and then go to your dialog box and just right click on the box and just press enter okay so and then you need to copy the second command again do the same thing just right click enter okay so done now what we need to do is copy the third command and after right click and enter the third command okay done so authorized part is only okay so you see the uh, you can see the output authorized party this is a secret message for the authorized parties only and secret message okay so click on check your progress yes done so you can see your score will be updated 30 by 40 okay so now we need to create a hash digest for creating a hash digest we need all uh, again copy paste enter okay then we need to copy this right button enter so you can see verified okay so check your progress yes i think you are done because our score is now 40 by 40 so now you need to press on end lab and lab will show you this okay so you don't miss i mean don't forget to give the stars before giving a review so i will give five star whatever because i need the full marks right as well as you okay so that's it cross that and i think we are done you will see your score as 100 percent so we need to go to week two and the last hands-on with hashing so which is really a long assignment it will take more time than the previous one so oh i forget to tell you you don't forget to close the session right and now start again and again don't forget to start up your putty file right whatever the cute name is okay so my putty file is open now i need to copy my student id again at the rate again ip address copy it at the rate oh don't forget to again download your ppk file because that's the authentication file so always download it so it's downloaded now what you need to do go to ssh authentication browse and quick labs open pbk okay so now press the dialog box yes so our connection is now stable now we need to go on to our programming okay so we need to enter the codes i mean the commands and then you will get the output after pressing the cat file okay so first of all we need to start with md5 so for md5 we need to copy the md5 and again enter so you can see check your progress we created a txt file or text file and now md sum we just copied it right click enter okay done and then again right click i mean press right click enter okay so we have already gone there the file txt file you can see 113 113 okay so now we need to go on to the next command md sum c file enter okay so our file txt is okay check your progress of md sum yes that's done and your score is 20 out of 60 now we need to verify an invalid file for this we need to cp file and bad file again press enter and then you need to press the next command and then again CT file and then 
nano bit file enter okay so now there's the important thing you need to do you see that your green cursor is at the front of this line you need to take this cursor here but you can't use your mouse so for this reason you need to use your arrow keys by using your arrow keys you see our cursor is already at the end of the line and at the end of the line so you need to press space bar and then press ctrl x then you will see another dialog box another command that is questioning you that do you want to save it or not so exactly you need to save so press y for yes and then enter so press y and then enter done our nanobat file and we also did it we also printer now try to verify this command by using a mat sum put it here enter sorry the checksum didn't match so i think we already did it so check your progress you will see the progress is done okay so we need to copy our next command copy it right click enter okay then again the next command enter enter okay so you see that that file txt you will you can see the output will be same as the picture is given so check your progress recompute md sum is done okay so you can also check your score is 40 by 60. okay now we need to exam sha1 and sha256 okay for this we need to call again copy the command right click enter and then cat file which is used for output function and then again enter okay so though we need to sha smc text file enter so okay so done sha1 hash is done check your progress done 50 by now sha 256 copy again enter and we need to get file txt for the output function okay so the last one get file ch 256 and we are done check your progress okay so that's the thing your score oh sorry your score is now 60 by 60 so be happy your week 2 is done I think so your score is 60 by 60 now end the lab press ok and don't forget to give them the review with the stars right whatever submit it and you you can close your quick labs and after that you will see your score will be updated in that portion of your week 2 so thank you and see you again in the next episodes so please be with us and don't forget to subscribe and share for the next week's update